Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and on February 22nd of 2023, TrueNAS Scale 22.12.1 was released, and I updated four different systems to it so I could start testing. Now we are 24 hours later, and actually one video later, because I had done the TrueNAS Mini R, and I edit my videos and all the files for all my editing are on a TrueNAS scale system, specifically a TrueNAS mini system. And I didn't have any problems. I didn't run into any bugs. I'm running virtualization on there and a few apps and everything seems to be working 24 hours later. So I figured I'd do a video. Now there's a couple of bugs that are noted in the new version, but I'm not able to reproduce them through my testing. But nonetheless, I'm going to note that they exist and there are some tickets open for them. So let's first talk about the systems updated and then we'll get into the details and changes. But this is a point release, so the changes aren't dramatic in this version. It's just a lot of little bug fixing going on. Now, the first system to get updated was my TrueNAS Mini right here that I'm doing the editing from. So this one's just a Intel Atom C3758 processor, and it's one of the you know standard ones where we got the enclosure where we can see it. This is like the, an older one I reviewed, but this is very similar to that TrueNAS Mini R. And of course, I did the TrueNAS Mini R with it up to date, which has the same processor, um, because I wanted to do the video on this with the latest version, and I've been testing this for about a week, technically using the new version of TrueNAS, because TrueNAS and I systems when they sent this to me also sent me like the updated preview version of it but the update from the preview version to this version didn't yield any surprises or any breakage then we have a couple ryzen systems so this is the amd ryzen 3 2200 this is a system that doesn't have a lot of memory but a decent amount of storage in it because we just use it to duplicate all the data at the office that's critical so we just have one more copy that we can quickly get back and this is the test server that i've done all the benchmarking on and with the 22.12.1 point release i didn't see any performance changes noted nothing that would make me want to rerun the benchmarks and go through and make a new video i don't feel that there's really a need for that but if there's something you do feel there's a need for it, let me know in the comments down below on there. But this one updated fine as well. No issues with it. That's generally how all these went. The only problem I kind of had, but this is self-inflicted. And it's, if you go over here to the boot settings, I had some old uh, boot environments left around in here and I didn't have enough storage. And when the update was running, it gave me an error about running low on storage, but that's self-inflicted of me not doing a uh, cleanup on these. But that's something you may want to consider is whether or not you have to clean some of the old environments that you don't need anymore and purge them out of here. It's easy as just checking a box and deleting them. And you can see this is the current one. There's the last one. I probably don't even need this one anymore. And you can just hit delete and confirm and you can delete them. Matter of fact, we'll do that right now live and see if there's any errors that come up when I delete one of these old boot environments. Generally speaking, this is a pretty easy process. There we go. It's deleted. Now, I'm not a big user of Nextcloud. I test it and that's really all I do once in a while to make sure it still works because I know many of you want to know whether or not there's a problem with Nextcloud when you update it because I know it, it's a good for home users that really want to rely on it. I just don't really uh, feel comfortable using it in a business setting, but I think it's a nice program. And one of the things I wanted to make sure worked is still with the Collaborate Office, Collabra Office thing is called, so you can edit the documents all inside here and that seems to work perfectly fine with the update. I will note they did change the name of it. It used to be the Collabra Office Settings. It's now called the Nextcloud Office Settings when you're configuring it. Um, at some point in the future, maybe I'll do a new video on how to get that set up, but it does work. I didn't have any breakage with the updates. The same things are there. Nothing broke. The updates went fine. So I figured I'll throw that out there for those of you that are Nextcloud users. Now, this is a bug I was concerned about, but it's also something I wasn't able to reproduce. So I don't know all the different details that apparently are required to reproduce this bug, but it's been acknowledged and they're looking into it. So there is some uh, pull requests for this. It's only three hours ago that there's an update. So I don't know that it's completely closed, but it has been looked at and in review by the folks over at IX Systems. And what they're saying is you can't edit the replication tasks. And maybe I just am overlooking something, but here's a replication task that I set up new, just for an example, and maybe it's existing ones, but I was able to edit the existing ones on my other server. But let's just change something in here. It says you can't change them. So we're gonna change the time at which it runs. I got it running every 10 minutes. Let's change it to run every hour, save, and no problem. I'd actually saved it before to have it run every hour and then changed it back every 10 minutes. And I did this a little while ago. So now there's several tasks running and we can even try and run manually. I'm not running into that particular error, but it is noted that there apparently is a circumstance by which this may be a problem for you. 
I'm not going to go into every detail because it would just make this video really long for every little bug fix they have. But hey, they do have a lot of little bug fixes in here. But the ones that really stood out to me in terms of like things that are changed was, well, this one actually confused me at first until I understood what they were referring to which is labeled dump active WebSocket sessions. What they mean is log out other admins. Now that you have the ability to, in TrueNASCale, use more than just root as an admin, maybe you would like to dump those other admins out and that's a new ability they added in there. But some of these features in here are not actually available to be done via the UI itself. They're done either through API calls or through the command line. So this isn't something like they added a button that says log out all other admins, but something that worth note that there's a change in there. And the one I want to talk about specifically is going to be allow users to create and manage ACL presets. And this is where there's always a lot of confusion because the UI elements are a little strange, but let's walk through creating and then copying and using one of these ACL presets to get a share set up. We have this folder SMB test, and we're going to go down here to permissions and edit. And we can see that the owners, Tom, group, Tom, group built in users, group built in administrators and user media that we have in here. And let's say we want to save this as a preset, pretty easy to do. And we'll call it Tom's preset and we hit save. And now we can apply that to another data set. So let's go ahead and create a new share by first. And we're going to start it in the same place, add a data set, and we'll call it test two, comments test two. When you're creating a new data set and you want it to have ACL permissions, make sure you choose the share type as SMB. Hit save. Now we're going to click on this data set and roll down here to permissions and hit edit. If you notice, it just has standard permissions, but when you hit edit, brings you right into the ACL. And we're going to set this to Tom again. And we're going to use a preset. So we'll hit the preset here, Tom preset, continue. And it also now added that user media. That's one more accessory on there. Now, what I ran into sometimes was you choose the preset. If we don't choose a user here, it won't set these. So that's why I did put the user up here, but it seems to add the extras that were on there. Maybe I'm not completely understanding how it works, but now I've allowed the user Tom and the user media full control in here, apply permissions recursively. I just do that out of habit. And then we will go ahead and save the access control list. Hit save. It's going to apply those. And now both Tom and admin would have access if we create a window share or SMB share for this particular data set. Now going back in here, and if you wanted to get rid of that preset, if we just click the save as a preset, you'll actually see right here the ability to put the X and click on it and actually delete those other presets. The ones that are built in still remain. Now that's all I have for the TrueNAS scale update, but go ahead and read through that change log. There's a lot of bug fixes for a point release. There's a lot of work that's being done. There's a lot of focus the team has and are rapidly developing their product. So I'm really excited watching it mature, watching all the, what was to me a really buggy system, which of kind of is expected when they first started to a much more mature system. I'm also looking forward to the scale out features such as Gluster coming out of essentially experimental. I know the features are baked in underlying. They're going to use true command to manage it. And I had a lot of people asking me for videos on it, but I'm going to just wait till it's a little more stable because I don't like when my videos that I make for tutorials get dated quickly because they change the way they do it. And when something's in experimental, that means there's a lot of experimenting going on and well, UI elements may change and, uh, there's a lot of effort that goes into producing those tutorials and making sure they're exact. And I don't want them to be outdated until something becomes more feature stable. Nonetheless, leave your thoughts and comments down below of any of the other bugs that you ran into. And of course, if you ran into a bug, make sure you're reporting it over in the TrueNAS forums and engaging with the team there. That's how they know how to fix it, not just from complaining about it, but I'm curious if there's some problem you ran into that maybe I didn't see or that replication error, which I've linked to that particular bug report and maybe I just didn't read it well enough to try to exactly reproduce the problem, but I'm happy I didn't have the problem because I have a lot of replication tasks going between all my different servers, both core and scale and scale and core. So uh, that one mattered to me probably more than the others because I'm less worried about the apps other than sync thing is the one app that I do use across all the servers and that one worked fine. But nonetheless, love hearing from you. I love hearing your thoughts and thanks. Thank you.